Hey, this is Bryce, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, Jack of Trades. Um, today, we're going to do another video on swap meet finds, and uh, I'll show you kind of what I found at the local swap meet that took place over the weekend. So, I didn't even know there was going to be a swap meet this weekend. Um, I woke up Saturday morning, it was early, I couldn't go back to sleep, so I hopped on Facebook and I saw a post by Ampro Engineering um, showing his car packed full of stuff. Um, and there was going to be a swap meet at a uh, local hobby shop, uh, JJ Customs LLC, which is it's probably one of the smallest hobby shops I've ever seen because it's based out of the guy's house, I believe. Um, but anywho, uh, I knew that if he was gonna, if, if uh, Alberto was going to be there from Ampro Engineering, um, that there were surely going to be some good finds. Uh, so I scheduled my day to go to that meet. Um, I showed up right as they were supposed to open. It was already packed. I started walking uh, over to his table. Uh, this is the first time I've met Alberto. Uh, and this is what, actually all the stuff is from him. I, I kind of stuck around his table for the most part. Um, so let's go through some of the stuff that I found. Um, first off, we'll get into this guy here. Uh, this is a little um, Hornet chassis with a Tamtec body. Um, but, What's unique about this, is, well first of all, it's in pretty good shape, um, so it can always be restored as a runner. Um, actually, it's not missing too much to make it a runner. But what's unique is it has all these vintage uh, UG uh, parts, that's Y-O-U-G. So we've got the UG front shocks, uh, the rear shocks, and these anti-roll bars um, in the back. And so I thought that was kind of cool, um, so I picked that up. Um, and then as I was amassing my pile of, of goodies, uh, he started throwing in stuff. So he threw in this little mini uh, racer, um, which is supposed to be fully functional, but I haven't tried it yet. But it was cute. So we got that. Um, and I saw this box sitting underneath uh, one of the tables. Um, it was empty. Uh, so this is a Rockbuster by World Engines. Um, and then he pointed me over to this box here, which is a, the Roadrunner 2 uh, by Academy. Um, so these are basically identical cars. Um, these are originally came out, this came out in 1988 uh, as a quote-unquote grasshopper clone. But if you kind of start looking at the car, it's got more, it's similar with the Hornet, the Tamiya Hornet than it does with the Tamiya Grasshopper. Um, and it's not a complete kit. Um, but it's, it's kind of the pertinent parts that make it unique. Um, so we've got a manual. Um, from what I've read, it's in poor, um, poorly, poorly translated English. Um, we've got the chassis, and this is all new. Chassis, the spoiler, uh, the front bumper, the body, which is starting to yellow. Um, similar to the grasshopper, it, the body screws onto the chassis. But the grasshopper doesn't have a separate wing like the Hornet does. Um, and it, and <clears throat> this car comes with gold, gold wheels, five, five hold gold wheels. There's no tires on it, but we can run, we can find some Tamiya tires that will fit that. Um, it's got kind of a Hornet style gearbox, um, Hornet style uh, swing, swing axle support, so it's got the slots versus the single pivot. Um, what makes the, these gearbox unique is that it has these kind of rib features, and that's how you identify it as a um, Roadrunner versus a Tamiya Hornet or Grasshopper. Actually, the Grasshopper is different than the Hornet, I believe. Um, so it is more like a Hornet um, gearbox. We've got the battery cover, the uh, lower arms, the front arms. Um, so I think we have a lot of the parts we need to build this car. We mainly just need some hardware kits, um, the internals for the gearbox, and we can build this up. And actually what I was thinking of doing is maybe um, taking the UG parts off of this guy, or actually all the parts that I need, the internals, the shocks, and applying it to this build here. Um, but I haven't quite decided on that yet. Um, and then in addition to this car, um, uh, Alberto threw in a bunch of uh, Hornet parts um, to go along. So I've got uh, some. So I've got some UG tires here, uh, front and rears. I don't. These rears definitely won't work with those wheels. Um, I haven't checked on the fronts yet. Uh, so 
So here's the front wheels. Those look too small as well. Um, these are tiny. I don't know what size that is. But so I got a set of UG tires. They actually feel pretty good for um, probably you know being 30 plus years old. Um, a bag of uh, Hornet arms. And I imagine these are probably less, as 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 Alberto would print out his lower arms. He'd probably pull these off. Um, and just throw in a bag and that's what I ended up with a bag of arms. Um, <clears throat> another uh, chassis. Now I'm not, I haven't done a Hornet or a Grasshopper, so I don't know the difference in chassis. Um, I think there's something going on. I know there's a difference in the rear end. This, I guess, looks like a Hornet chassis, but I, I couldn't be certain of that. Certain of that. Uh, what else we got? A bunch of wheels. We got a, a parts tree with battery door. Um, the uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, these uh, these side guard, the, these side cages. The, the the term slips my mind right now. Um, and just a whole bunch of other bunch of wheels, old used wheels, three piece rims. Um, most all of these the rubber is bad, so I, I would have to uh, replace the rubber. I wonder if these would fit on these. Yeah, so the, the, these tires would, looks like they would fit on the uh, Hornet rims. I if that's true. That's probably true for the uh, front tires as well. So yeah, it looks like these would work with the um, original uh, three-piece Hornet rims. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll build these up Hornet rims. Well, these have the gold rims though, so we want to use the gold rims that came with the Roadrunner. What else? Yep, yeah. yeah. that's it in that box. Parts. And then there was this box under the table as well. Um, so this is an RC10. I believe this is the team car box. I actually have a really nice condition um, uh, team, basically it's shelf queen quality um, team car. Um, so, but I don't have the box, so this would be kind of nice to have the box. I'm not a box collector. I refuse to pay money for boxes. Um, but having the box as, as part of the haul is, is nice. Um, and unbeknownst to Alberto in the box uh, was a brand new B-Stamp chassis. And of course, I, I told him about it. Um, uh, so I got a, a new B-Stamp chassis. This is good for the 5Ts, I believe, as well as uh, the team car. So, uh, and I've got lots of uh, RC10 projects kind of on the back burner. So this will be nice for one of my restorations. Um, I also found this sitting on the table. This is a Tamiya TAO2 uh, FRP chassis. Um, <clears throat> I believe they're remaking these now, but these are still hard to find and they're really expensive on eBay as new kits. Um, so that was a good find because I, I, I try to pick these up when I can find them if, if they're a good price and that was a good find. Um, there are also a bunch of vintage motors, um, more than I could afford. Um, but I did pick up two of them. I'm, I'm not a motor collector, uh, but I do have a couple of uh, 959s in the Toyota Celicas and the GRBs. Um, so these would be, I mean, they're two different motors. One is the uh, RX 540SD, the other is the 540VZ. Um, but these will be good for some builds if I, if I ever get around to those builds. These are new inbox motors. They haven't been used, run, uh, so it comes with. Um, you know, you got the motor, there's a little, um, <laughs> there's a little tool here, but it's a complete um, new motor. So I know these can get pricey on eBay. Um, I got a decent price on them at the, at the swap meet. Um, so two new motors. Um, yeah, that's what was in that box. Um, and now we get to the um, the elephant in the room, <laughs> the, the Hornet June Watanabe uh, kit. Um, so I saw this sitting on the table and I a couple of things and, and I was immediately drawn to this. This is the first thing I saw when I showed up at the swap meet. Um, it's not a complete kit, unfortunately, um, but I've been kind of had my eye on these um, just to see if I could get one for a good deal and usually the answer, they, they just prices on these go through the, the roof. Um, Ampro has a good video, kind of a buyer's guide to these. And 
when they were starting to phase these out of production, um, he picked up a couple of cert for less than 100 bucks each, uh, which is insane when you consider how much they're going for now. But I got a good price on it. Well, I got a good price on it. I'll leave it at that. Um, but it's not a complete kit. Um, what it is, it's basically 90% of the parts required to build up a June Watanabe uh, Hornet. So we've got an original complete sticker sheet. Um, we've got the body and wing, and that's not, I mean, you can get those now. Right? I don't think there's any special, anything special about the body. We've got the pink tires. Um, we've got all the purple plastics. So we've got the, uh, this is the swing axle parts. Uh, we've got the swing axle gearbox. We've got the main chassis. Uh, we've got the battery door and the brush guards. I used to call these brush guards. Uh, we've got the black wheels, um, the purple bumper, and the purple uh, front suspension components. So what's missing from this to make it complete are a couple of things. We're missing the, um, for the steering, actually, oh, and sorry, we have the, the, the pink spindles. So for the steering, uh, there's also pink rod ends, or um, ball cups, I guess, um, to complement these uh, spindles. And it's missing those. Uh, it's also missing the pink wheel nuts. And then the, um, the shocks have white springs, so it's missing the white springs. So those three components are kind of the only thing that I know that's missing from the kit to make it a complete Watanabe kit. Um, but I think some of that I can, I, I'm not collecting, this isn't meant to be kind of a, a new in box kit to, to go in the collection and never get built. Um, so I'm not too concerned about some of the missing components like the instruction manual is fairly unique because it's printed in purple. Um, and just the fact that it's not a complete kit. Um, my plan is to build this up um, and that's where it'll have the most value for me in my collection as, as a, a built up kit on the shelf uh, or on display. Um, so to complete the kit, that's why I have this other Hornet kit down here. Uh, the plan is to uh, strip all the hardware, the internals for the gearbox from this kit, and this, the rest of the spring components. Um, take, um, take all those parts from this kit and bring it over to this kit so I can build it up. Um, so that's the plan. Um, the, the combined cost of this is still less than had I had if I had to have purchased um, this kit online. Right now on eBay there's a couple on eBay. I don't think there's any new in-box kits. I think they're built up and they're just asking for ridiculous amounts of money for them. Um, I'm kind of over spending a lot of money on, on vintage kits. <laughs> I have enough kits to, to last me a while. So if I can find good deals like this, um, I'll jump on them. But otherwise, uh, I'm good. <laughs> uh, the prices have gotten ridiculous. And really it's kind of a, I think it's just a period thing where over time the prices are going to come back down once the market for the people that are in their 40s kind of either get out of the hobby or they grow older. Um, I think we'll see a drop in prices, but I don't know. I'm just speculating and it means nothing. So yeah, uh, all in all, that, that was the second swap meet that I'd been to. Um, I had a lot of fun looking around at stop chatting with uh, Alberto. Um, he's a really cool guy, um, but it was fun. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to go to Swap Meet in your area, I, I definitely recommend it. Um, and that's all I got. Thanks for watching, have a good one.